In this video, we will look at how to connect to your brushless motor controller from a Windows computer. First, we need to download and install software called ServiceScope. The installation process boils down to unzipping a downloaded file. Look for an executable file inside the directory with unzipped files. Double click on the executable file to launch it. Now that the ServiceScope program is launched, we need to power up our brushless motor controller. Look for power input terminals designated by plus and minus signs. The controller can be powered by a power supply unit or by a battery. Typical input voltages are 7 to 60 volts DC. Please be extra careful with voltage polarity. In this video, we are going to use a USB cable to connect the controller to a computer. The other option is CAN bus interface, but we will look at CAN bus later. A regular USB cable is used. Note that the USB cable is not used to power the controller and its motor. It's time to turn on the power supply. Once you do it, make sure that the controller's LED power indicator is on. Now, let's go back to Windows. The controller appears to Windows as a virtual COM port. It can be found in a general list of devices in the settings window. If your computer happens to have more than one serial port, you may wish to check a COM port's number assigned by Windows to the controller. Then, you pick this COM port in a drop-down menu in ServiceScope software, and click Connect. If the COM port is not listed in the drop-down menu, click the Refresh button. If everything is good, the controller shall appear in a list of devices. Double-click to open up a Control and Configuration window. Note that you can connect multiple motor controllers to the same computer via a single USB cable. This way, Multiple motors can be controlled by the same computer. Let's quickly look at how to do that. You would need one or more CAN bus cross cables to interconnect the controllers. Each controller comes with two identical ports for the cables. Connect as many as 16 motor controllers in a chain this way. Only one of the motor controllers needs to be connected to the computer via the USB cable. This chaining approach simplifies building machines with multiple degrees of freedom. I powered up two motor controllers in my network. If we go back to ServiceScope program, we will see that both controllers appear in a list of devices in the window. Double click on a device to open its command and configuration window. We will take a detailed look at ServiceScope program in a separate video. For now, just check that the telemetry window displays a correct input voltage. Since the motor controller appears to Windows as a virtual COM port, any program can connect to that port to receive telemetry or to send commands to the controller or a network of controllers. Let's close the ServiceScope program.
and start an open source serial port terminal program. This is one of many serial port terminal utilities that can be downloaded from the internet. Make sure you select a proper COM port. All other connection parameters do not matter since the port is a virtual one. You can see telemetry data being streamed by the controller in a text format. Let's make some cosmetic configuration changes in the terminal to enhance the way the telemetry data is displayed. Using the terminal, you can also send commands to the motor controller, but we will look into this in a separate video. At this point, our installation on the Windows system is finished. Just for completeness, let's make a quick demo run with some motors. I've got a brushless motor with a quadrature absolute encoder. I have already connected it to the rectangular controller. I also got a small sensorless motor. I am going to connect it to the circular controller. The sensorless motor has just three phase wires that need to be plugged to proper terminals on the controller. Make sure that the power supply is turned off before connecting the motors, hall sensors or encoders. If your electric drive has an absolute encoder, the controllers can turn the electric drive into a servo motor or a direct drive motor. In this demo, we will look at simpler electronic speed control mode. But first, we need to launch an auto configuration routine that allows the controller to commission a new motor that we have just connected. We will start from the smaller sensorless motor. Let's launch the service scope program again and select an auto configuration command from the drop down menu. Specify a maximum phase to phase electric current that the motor can handle. Specify the number of poles your motor has. By the way, these values normally come from the motor's datasheet. Click the send button. Look at the smaller motor. It is making what looks like mysterious Kong Fu moves. What actually is happening is that its controller is automatically measuring various characteristics of the motor. The measurement routines cause the motor to make the moves. The motor accelerates to its maximum speed. Be careful as the motor is producing its maximum torque at this moment. The rapid accelerations may take place a few times during the auto configuration procedure. Let's launch the auto configuration procedure for the second motor as well. Switch to the other window. Pick auto configuration command from the drop down menu. Specify a maximum phase to phase electric current that your motor can handle. Specify the number of poles your motor has. Click the send button. Note that the motors produce a beep sound at the beginning of the auto configuration routine. The controller sends probing electric pulses to the motor to measure various characteristics of the motor. The beauty of the auto configuration function is that the controller automatically configures itself when commissioning a new motor. Beware of the rapid accelerations of the motor that might take place a few times. I suggest that you watch a separate video dedicated to peculiarities of the auto configuration routine. The motor produces the second beep sound to indicate the end of the auto configuration procedure. Now that both controllers have been configured, I am going to send an electronic speed control command to the bigger motor. Choose electronic speed control command from the same drop down menu. I specified speed as 150 electrical revolutions per second. Hit the send button. Note that the program sends the commands to the serial port in a text format. The motor starts spinning with the commanded speed. Let's start the smaller motor. Now both motors are spinning at their commanded speeds, issuing stop commands. That's it for now. In this video we looked at how to connect brushless motor controllers to a Windows computer via USB interface. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube and Telegram channels. See you soon. Thank you for watching.